Issue 1, Giuliani out front. Question, can Vigory deliver the anti-abortion evangelicals, and if so, will it abort Giuliani's presidential bid? Richard Vigory hasn't been a meaningful force in conservative politics for about 20 years. The real issue was, of course, James Dobson had an op-ed in the Times. I blogged about it. As I said in my blog, the issue that belies all of this is that when they say there are no good social conservative candidates in the Republican Party, they are lying. There are two perfectly good radical social conservative slash theocratic candidates. You got Sam Brownback and you have Mike Huckabee. So why aren't James Dobson, Richard Vigory, and all the other radical social conservatives throwing their support behind particularly Mike Huckabee? I think he's the, the stronger of two candidates. Well, the answer is for the simple reason that neither of them can win. And they want to pretend that they are power brokers, that they are kingmakers. They know that if they throw all their weight behind Mike Huckabee and Mike Huckabee goes nowhere, then it's going to mean that they're not the power brokers that they like to pretend, that they don't command the so-called values voters in huge chunks of the population, which of course they don't. If they want to either try to pull a nader and give the election to the Democrats, and the Democrats going to win anyway, we know that, then, and then say after the fact, ah, but for us, the, the Republicans would have won, but you didn't give us what we wanted, so we're going to stay home and give it to the Democrats. Please, people see through that. It's all nonsense. Look what I found in my library. A bit of youthful indiscretion from, from long ago. Look at this. Richard Vigory, the new right, we're ready to leave. This is from 1981. Look at this. It's in, not in very good shape either. Would you not agree that the independents are going Democratic big time, and therefore the evangelicals are needed by the Republicans if they have any hope of winning with, with anybody? I actually don't see much evidence of that. And in that sense, let's keep in mind that Hillary Clinton, for all the talk about her being inevitable, still has 40-something percent unfavorables, will not vote for her under any circumstance. You don't get that if independents are thronging to the Democratic Party. Okay, Mitt Romney scores low. <laughs> Was Romney's answer smart or was it ruinous, I ask you? Romney's answer was that he was a, quote, true blue Mormon and that he believes every premise of the Mormon church. Let's begin with some first principles. The Mormon religion is mind-bogglingly silly, but then again, so is Catholicism and so are a lot of other religious beliefs. The point, though, is that A, people don't know Mormonism. The other thing is there are true dissenters in the radical, evangelical, theocratic community towards Mormonism. The head of the Southern Baptist Convention, which is the largest religion in America, I think, has called Mitt Romney, or voting for a Mormon, voting for Satan. Well, that's kind of a high hurdle to overcome. We see this with Jews also, the way that evangelicals address Jews, and I've blogged about this. They like to pretend, these evangelicals, that they are big tent, old plus New Testament religionists in public. And they say, oh yeah, we, we, we include the Jews, we include the Catholics, we include the Mormons. But in polite company, when they're amongst themselves, it is all Jesus in hellfire all the time. So yes, this is a real, real problem for Romney. If Romney does a JFK Houston speech on his Mormonism, can he win the election? I've blogged about this too. Romney does not need to do a JFK Catholic speech. It's an entirely different issue. Two points. Number one, Kennedy was already the Democratic nominee. He was not speaking to Democrats to get the nomination. He was speaking to Republicans to try to win the election. Here, Romney can't even win the nomination because his own party is rejecting him for his Mormonism. It's entirely different. Second, there was a very particular specific issue with Kennedy, which was, is a Catholic head of government subservient to the Vatican? That's not an issue in Mormonism. There's not a Mormon pope. There's a hierarchy and there's a president or something like that. The idea that, that, that 
Romney can pull a Kennedy Catholic speech is totally wrong. It's, it's based on totally wrong premises. I've blogged about that. Go find it. Issue two, got the power. Question, should we admire or should we deplore Putin's power play? You can't be serious. Russia shows, as does Iraq, that democracy is not the end-all and be-all of peace and civilization and prosperity. What makes successful free societies is not democracy. It's the check on democracy, by which I mean limited government, inviolate rights, free speech, property rights, employment rights, contractual rights that the government respects and doesn't trample. You can have all the democracy you want, but if the people you elect are going to ransack the country, are going to throw you in a gulag, are going to seize your property, are going to kill you, then what's the point of democracy? Democracy is secondary. Institutions that respect property rights, that respect freedom of press, individual sovereignty, freedom of contract, that's what makes a free and great society. Is Putin's plan too clever by half, or is it a great recipe for continued stability in Russia and a smooth power transition? As far as I'm concerned, Russia is a lost cause. It's a nation of alcoholics. It's a country that has never had a functioning, peaceful, civilized, limited government democracy ever in its entire history. The Russian people just don't get it. And whether that's their fault or not, others can debate. The only reason we should even give a damn about Russia is because it is still a military power, it's still a nuclear power. But if they want to sink ever, ever deeper into the muck of totalitarianism and kleptocracy, I don't see what we can do to stop them. But it's not that Putin is too clever by half, it's that the Russian people are too idiotic by half. Predictions. The looming crisis in state and local employee pension funds which are critically underfunded to the tune of perhaps trillions of dollars, is going to begin to erupt in the next presidential administration and will paralyze various tax and spend programs by the joint Democratic president, whoever that is, and Democratic Congress, because state and local governments, including those run by Democrats, are going to demand a fiscal bailout and the debate over that crisis is going to cripple any potential for new programs by the federal government or, for that matter, any talk of true Social Security or Medicare reform. Bye-bye.